Well, if and when any health care reform is passed, how should investors play this? Orbimed is the world's largest health care dedicated investment firm with $5 billion in assets under management. Dr. Robert Glassman is a private equity partner at Orbimed, as well as a clinical assistant professor at Weill Cornell Medical College. And he joins me now uh, from New York. Dr. Glassman, uh, nice to see you. Uh, you know, we've been talking quite a bit about the numbers here in Washington, the lobby of numbers, but uh, no doubt there's going to be some profits made on health care reform. Let's just start with this first scenario. If we don't get comprehensive reform, which looks as if it may be the case at this point, uh, who is going to benefit in the corporate world? If we have comprehensive health care reform, the major benefits will be hospitals. No, if we do not, if we no. do not first. If, if we, we do, do not, not have reform, the major benefits will be HMOs because they will have the overhang on MLRs, the medical loss ratios, and premium regulation. Uh, will have been removed and clearly right now the public option seems to be off the table anyway that would have been a crushing blow to any uh, large insurer the um, the other benefit beneficiaries will probably be pharmaceutical companies to some extent uh, given all the taxes and and fees on them and potentially more uh, more pricing pressure um, and I think there will be really very few um, Groups within within the healthcare space who will be who will be beneficiaries if uh, if reform is is passed. There's only a few Why in that, that regard. But if Why reform is, is so it's because reform the whole purpose of reform is is a composite piecemeal of taxes and cuts and mandates and fees, and it's not aligning the preferences of consumers with that of the provider or the insurer. It's basically creating an anti-marketplace. Uh, the, the one beneficiary I can imagine with health care reform is passed. And by the way, I would say most hedge funds in our space do not feel it will be passed, while long-only funds are probably more on the sideline on this. But the hospitals will probably be a beneficiary to more coverage and, and less uh, bad debt expense. Um, so. Insurers, Dr. Glassman. Yeah. And also, Medicaid, the other one would be Medicaid, H, uh, will be Medicaid uh, HMOs, uh, because Medicaid will be the way uh, coverage will be expanded. Uh, Dr. Glassman, this is Peter Cook here. Let me ask you about that. If we don't see comprehensive reform, there's a lot of people here in Washington talking about, again, piecemeal steps, individual steps that could, uh, for example, affect health insurers going forward if uh, uh, the government somehow were to require them to, to take on more people with pre-existing conditions, for example. How worried are you about some of those piecemeal steps becoming the law of the land if larger comprehensive health care reform doesn't happen? Well, first of all, I do think there are necessary consumer protection mechanisms that need to be in place in the insurer market. The insurer market is not um, a real marketplace, as you know. There was an article by Robert Reich yesterday, I think, in the uh, New York Times concerning that. It's really because of the old ERISA regulations, there is uh, monopolies across states. So I think creating a more of a market within the insurer world will only be of benefit. And, cre and having some necessary uh, pr consumer protections such as uh, a lack of exclusions on uh, prior conditions right. or portability, uh, uh, right. ra premium rate increases. I think all those are probably necessary, uh, but they're not nearly as damaging as a public option would be. Public option would have killed these companies. Okay, Dr. Glassman, we're going to have to leave it there, but I appreciate you, uh, you coming on with us and talking about investing in health care.